Welcome to the Book Club Live. I'm Jenny Snow, and today we have an awesome author interview with New York Times, USA Today bestseller, Rachel Haup. Oh, don't forget Wall Street Journal. Yes, Hi, Wall, Wall Street, Street Journal, Journal. <laughs> Christie Award, more accolades than I can uh, recount, except for I will mention uh, one of her books was also made into a Hallmark movie. For sure, for is sure. so cool. Yes, very. Um, great book, good movie too. Great book, great movie. Let's, let's just say both. It was a cute both. movie. Yes, they I were like... really cute. Yes. Thumbs up from the author. And from my daughter. She liked it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, very um, good. That's a big compliment. You know? Yes. Yes. Um, if you're new to the show, when we do an author interview, there's three sections. Uh, number one, I'll introduce the author. Number two, uh, Rachel will uh, have a book club with us uh, about her own book. And we're going to do her newest, The Memory House. No. And then, woohoo, just finished it. It was really good and perfect for book clubs. And you'll see why in a minute. Um, and then a third section just for fun. All right. Because um, we like to have fun. Well, just for fun yes. is always so scary. Mm, who knows what <laughs> Jenny's going to ask. I will be uh, honest. I'm very transparent. That's awesome. I like that about Except you. Except yes. for like super, 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 super personal. Then I might give you a skated answer. But yeah. that's And that's totally fine. <laughs> I have had people say that, you know, I think I'm not going to share my most embarrassing moment that I don't want on record oh, forever. Oh, I can't wait to share my <laughs> most embarrassing moment. Please. <laughs> Ask um, away. <laughs> and then if I didn't mention, we're doing a giveaway. Um, so do check the show notes for how to enter. Um, I'm giving away the memory house. Or if you've already read it, um, then you can pick, and if, you, and if you win, you can pick any book that we talk about on the show today. Um, so Rachel, uh, you also give back to other writers. You are um, on the board, right, of yes, American Christian Fiction American, Writers. Yes, I am. And she teaches, and that's where we are today, at the ACFW Conference in San Antonio. I look, I can see the, the river walk out there. Out the window, yeah. Yes. It's beautiful. Um, and so I've really gotten to know you just a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. as readers do through your mm -hmm. Instagram. She occasionally does No Makeup Monday, um, but she said she scared herself. But I scare myself <laughs> and I look at those, I'm like, what? But yeah. I do, she I do every great. Monday. I I'm, do every Monday. Yeah. So something every Monday, but you know. Well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I it. I'll do more. That'll um, be, next one will be dedicated to you. Oh. No makeup you. Monday for Jenny. <laughs> I live no makeup uh, except for when I'm doing the show. Yeah. that I do. We put an effort. Yeah, too, we put for an you effort guys. Out, yeah. Um, but um, so I really enjoyed you. But before all of that, before getting to know you on social media, um, I just enjoyed your books. Thank so, you. I appreciate um, that. I really do. I um, listened to this one on Audible. This is Once Upon a Prince, and that was the one that was made into a Hallmark movie. And the whole series was really cute. And uh, perfect timing with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and um, all of that. Um, do they make cameo appearances or are they kind of talked about a little off to uh, the side? No, I haven't. Because it was before that, right? It was. This is more William and Kate, which are mentioned in this book. Okay. Once Upon a Princess, William and Kate. Um, I don't think that I've mentioned Harry and Meghan. When I wrote How to Catch a Prince, which is really reminiscent of their story, because I have a uh, mixed race Tara when she's Latino and American. Her okay. name is Del Rey, and her and then she marries the brother of the prince slash king in Once right. Upon a Prince, uh, Prince Stephen, who it was a little bit of a rascalian like Harry, yeah. um, <laughs> but he was a rugby player, and um, so so the, they, their story actually was very reminiscent of that. Um, but how to catch Once Upon a Prince came out right before they got married. The movie yeah. came out okay. right before they got married, not so the movie, was... the book. That was great yeah. timing, um, and it was just, it was neat. It was kind of fun to it was see fun. both happening at the same time. Oh, yes, I'm reading this, and hey, it's not such a fairy tale. It's not such a fairy tale. Yes. It does happen in real yes. life, yes. Um, and then I also wanted to mention the wedding dress, just because it was, how many, do you know how many weeks this was on the New York Times bestseller? Nine weeks on the New yeah, York Times. that's a long, that's a that's long a time. That's a long time, yes, it was. Um, for a book. But um, without further ado, our, memory house. our episode here is on The Memory House. And um, this was really neat uh, to listen to. It was very reflective, and it also had me thinking about my grandparents, because it's dual time. There's a present day story, and um, kind of 1950s, 60s. Yeah, historical. Yeah. Late, one scene in the early 50s, and then the rest is the, late, is the early 60s. OK. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And so this is what I'm going to ask you um, okay. questions All about. right, let's go. We'll so uh, number one, this book is all about memories confronting the past and mm -hmm. facing the future. Yes. Um, what is one memory, good or bad, that has made a mark on you, and mm. how did it change you? One memory, good or bad, that made a mark on me. Let's see. 
Well, you know, we have lots of memories, and I'm almost 59, so I have a storehouse of memories. Um, I have a lot of good childhood memories. I grew up uh, traveling, uh, not traveling, but moved. we moved around a little bit, but I had a grandmother who lived in southern Ohio in the Shawnee State Forest on the Ohio River, uh, right at the Ohio River, uh, Ohio and Kentucky border. And we just had a lot of fun times living, mm. going to that house, playing in the woods, playing in the creek, fishing with Velveeta yeah. cheese. Uh, and my oh, dad, wow. and my dad was a great guy. My mom's a my mom's a great woman as well. But I have a lot of fun memories of my dad. Have, one particular that I love is at Christmas time. We're waiting for my grandparents to come, and my dad bought all those Snicker bites. They were mm-hmm. brand new um, at the time. This is probably the early 70s and he threw them in the freezer and so we would all go these nice cold yes, chocolate and caramel chocolate, chocolate yeah and, but I was teaching him a hand game and so it was like you know one of those ch- ch- hand okay. games and he was doing it and then he would just get messed up and he would just start laughing and he would just go ah, ah, ah. and it, it just is a fun memory of of who he was he had a great mm. laugh and so that's one of my fun memories and I have a lot of fun memories of laughing in college I mean we just laughed all the time so yeah I love laugh memories don't you guys yeah the they're ones. the best those, those are the, the, best those are the ones. ones that my kids want to know they're like tell us about that one time yeah again yeah. mom <laughs> yeah 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 that's awesome I love that um okay there was another quote that's I had such a hard time this is the hardest interview that I've prepared for this whole weekend because there were so many like things that just jumped out at me and oh, I had wow. to narrow them down but yeah anyways so this is one of them um, a character says to another, you don't have to have all the answers before you try something. Yes, I do, the character says. It's too scary otherwise. And I just liked that because it sounded like something I might say, like, yes, I do, and yeah, you right. can't tell me otherwise. Right, yeah, most but, of us feel that way, right? Yes. Um, but can you, do you have a time that you took action on something that you didn't have the answers to? Were you scared? How did it work out? Um, do you have an experience like that? Oh, sure. I have a couple. Um, when I was in junior college and I was in Florida and I had to go on to, you know, upper level classes. So I was either Florida state bound or Florida bound and I was accepted in both schools. But I went to visit my grandmother for her 80th birthday and I had two sets of grandparents or a grandmother and grandparents who lived in Ohio. And then I went up to Columbus from Portsmouth, Ohio to visit my other grandparents. And it was June in Ohio. I mean, come on, this could be anything more beautiful. Right. And I thought, I'm going to Ohio State. Hmm. What? Out of state tuition. Wow. Um, my parents weren't going to pay for it. And so I had to just take a leap of faith and yeah. quit my job that I'd worked at for years and so years. So you just and had years. this knowing that yeah. that's where you were supposed to go? I just wanted to go, right. Okay. I got accepted and I got in, and it was hard. Oh boy, it was hard the first year. Lots of stories there. But um, eventually, I was living on campus, eventually joined a sorority, and mm. kind of had the college experience that I wanted. Yeah. There's some things I don't recommend. Right. But, you know, I was at the football games every Saturday, and I just had a great time, mm. lots of laughter. But it, I did take that risk. I jumped out. And then when I started writing, we cut our household income into two-thirds when I quit the job. Wow. So I was in the corporate world, wow. um, and I was a program manager, and I had worked my way up. And, and I didn't want to be because I had already started writing and then the Lord sent me back into the corporate world and I kept getting promoted and I thought well maybe I'm supposed to be a businesswoman right. because I do enjoy it a lot but I always had this desire to write my father used to tell me Rachel you're a writer be a writer mm. so off I uh, go I wrote a story and ended up get got published got a contract and now I'm full-time I'm in ministry with my husband I'm in working full-time and I'm writing a novel and I just was like, I can't do all this. So we gradually cut, I went to ha- three quarter time, part time, anyway. Okay. I cut the household income in two thirds. And you know, we never missed yeah. a beat. Yeah. Never missed a beat. God was always there. So that's awesome. It's worth taking a I risk love that. and not knowing the answer. Yes. <laughs> I am pursuing a writing career as well. Yes. And it is scary because it is scary. Um, I set out writing and here I am doing a YouTube channel. But I'm still doing the writing. But yeah, so it's kind of like, who knows where this will go. I know, but she's smart, guys, because. <laughs> Now when she writes her book and gets it published, and she goes, Rachel, will you endorse my book? I'll be, absolutely, oh, I'll endorse your book. All right. <laughs> or Rachel. If it's good. If it's, if it's good. good. Right, right. I'll say, I'll take a look at it. Okay. But uh, if you say, oh, Rachel, I really need some story help. Do you have time? I will make time. That is so yeah. sweet. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, That's what relationships are Anna, all about. you've actually also already, you probably don't remember, but given me a little bit of advice. I took the uh, Susan May Warren's 
um, how to write a brilliant romance course a long time ago. But um, anyways. All right, okay. Yes, so great advice. There you go. Great class. Also, Trisha Goyer has Write That Book. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. On Facebook, so all kinds of good things out there if you're interested in writing. Um, so I'll put both of those links in the yeah, show notes. Yeah, novel.academy. Novel.academy, thank yeah, you. Yeah, there you go. Okay, next question. I also loved this one. Um, I just related to these characters so that's much. That's good, um, wow, that's Both awesome. of them, the, yeah. the historical ones and the Everly, present day. Everly and Beck, yes. yes. My hair is doing um, something really funky, I'm sorry. Okay, you guys, I'm good <laughs> Looks now. good to me. <laughs> um, speaking of Beck, side, side question. So, did you get her name? Was it at all inspired by Kate Beckett from the show Castle? Or is no. that just a happenstance? That okay. was a happenstance. Okay. I actually have used the name Becca or Rebecca before because my sister is Rebecca. And I just, I don't know, I was going through, she's a cop. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, I need a kind of a tough sounding name. Yes. And I didn't even think about Beckett until, because she was always Beckett, never okay. Beck. Right. But I just picked Beck and I liked it. And okay. she's just Beck. She's not Becca right. or Rebecca. It's, she's it's not Beck. the same. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Well, she's definitely a tough cop with attitude and uh, all yeah, of that. So yeah, I was she like, is. I wonder. Um, Okay, so back to the question. Here's the quote. He started the shower water, then studied his reflection in the harsh mirror lights, rubbing his hand over his night beard. He looked rough. He felt rough, and he felt like quitting. Maybe he'd run away to Montana or Idaho and be a mountain man. So I've had that feeling of, oh, I feel rough. Mm -hmm. I just wanna run away. I've even said to my husband, well, I think I need a night off. I'm not gonna run away. <laughs> Right, but right. I do need a night off. I do need a night off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, but more seriously, um, have you ever felt that where you just need to get away? And what do you do when you feel that? How do you reset mm. or recharge? Yeah, or reset or recharge. That's a really great question. Because a lot of times, I don't think we can identify what we need to recharge. Mm -hmm. So, I, I had this really great spring. And then coming into the year, the summer of this year, I just started feeling bad physically, which starts mm -hmm. impacting your emotions. And you start asking questions like, what's wrong? Why do I feel bad? It was, it? Right. you know, and we always go, is it something I'm eating? Or is yes. it something I'm, did I say something? And now the devil's got, you know, we just start right. going down the list. What time of the month is it? What time, yeah, well, not for me, I'm in menopause, but. <laughs> That's what I, I ask. Yeah, you can ask that. And I go, and so my husband and I went to his 40th high school reunion in, in Indiana. And I, though I've lived most of my life in Florida, I have Midwest, roots I mean Ohio girl and and it just felt so good to be there in the hmm. summer I felt like I went back to ground I call it I went back home yeah. and and that was very refreshing to me um, a lot of times now if I feel that way I usually go to the Lord and go what's going on yeah. and sometimes you just got to process through it and sometimes you can't get away you have right. children or you have responsibilities sometimes I'll go to the beach because uh, I live near the beach but the other thing that always helps me is just nice. just driving yeah driving or maybe I'll put on um, a show that I like that doesn't require anything of me like I don't mm -hmm. have to pay attention right and that's not gonna mess with me and in, in any kind of way just kind of relaxing so you just let yourself just let yourself not go. have to get anything mm -hmm. on the to-do mm -hmm. list done mm -hmm. and yeah. just ask the Lord what it is ask yeah. for his help Oh yeah, take or some time off. Spend some time in prayer, just like casual prayer, not like I'm going down a list or right. anything. I also really love being outside. Mm -hmm. So I'll go sit on our deck. I might go for a walk. Yeah. Um, just kind I, of like let your brain go. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I don't live near any like great. Uh, well, I guess I do beauty. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just like to go outside sometimes and just walk a lap in my yard and look up at the trees and yeah. pretend there's not a bunch of houses around, just look up at the trees, but it's just beautiful. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. I think that's really beneficial is to stop and recognize the beauty. Because yeah. when you think about it, we were originally designed to live outside. Adam right. and Eve didn't have a house, yeah. right? So I'm like, there must be something outside for us mm. because we were designed to live outside. You know, I don't know if I've heard of any, anybody say that. Yeah. I'm sure somebody has, but I haven't. That's I a, think that's we can just say it was, it yeah, it was here Rachel. first. It Rachel happened quote. here first. <laughs> um, okay. So this is a thoughtful, reflective book, but it also has two great love stories. There were definitely mm -hmm. some oh, mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. um, so what made you fall in love with your husband? How did you know he was the one? And what do you love about him now? Or pick one or two of those. How much time do you have? <laughs> My goodness. Um, short story, walked into church one day, I was, uh, just got my corporate job and I traveled. So I was gone, you know, 70% of the time. But anyway, I was coming out of college, getting back with the Lord, kind of like, okay, God, I'm serious now, I'm yours. 
And I just said, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. So I, that's kind of my MO. God, I've got nothing. Hmm. What do you want to do? And then usually there's a shift in my life. That's how I got the job and it sent me to Central Florida. Um, anyway, I finally find the church that I'm supposed to go to and it's been um, 32 years. So oh, wow. I think I was supposed to be there. Yeah. And I walked in and I saw this guy and thought, well, he's okay. He had a beard. And this is the 80s. Guys didn't wear beards yeah. in the 80s. And I was like, oh, no. Oh. Um, but then I found out he was the single youth and singles pastor. So, no. Mm -mm. Not going there. Every girl oh, thinks the single pastor is her husband. So, <laughs> I had a couple of trips. We Did they? Did a lot of people yes. around you? They all liked him? Yes, oh, five okay. people, including me. Wow. Uh, yeah, so we, I, anyway, I go on a couple of trips and I come back and he's asked me out. We go out and he's like real kind of formal, like, I want to ask permission of your father to date you. And I'm like, what? So <laughs> we dated, but God totally took over our emotions. He's allowing me to fall in love with him, but literally removed all of his original affection for me. Hmm. So now we are just friends because there's nowhere to go. And I'm like, God, this is so unfair. But it was such mm. a journey. I don't recommend it. Don't ask for this. But in the meantime, he's still telling me you're going to marry this guy. And I like, I think that sounds like God, but you're doing a really great imitation, whoever yeah. you are, right? Yeah. And we were growing in friendship, growing in friendship, growing in friendship. And then literally on a day, God dropped all of his feelings back into him for mm. me. And it was a game on it was really at that wow. point it was like whoa who's this guy because i'm three years just as a friend right. so imagine your really good friend yeah. is suddenly now trying to cuddle up and kiss yeah. you and tell you he loves you and i'm like what get out of here were you so, get out of here i'm not ready or get out of here oh my goodness this oh is my really gosh happening. this is really <laughs> happening this is weird and, and at first we had tried to date in the three years that this was all going on and so and it always failed and so i was kind of like oh no here we go again yeah but god really did dropped it mm. really in a day dropped the feelings in for him and it was just a whole different ball game yeah. and we were engaged like two months later and got married five months after that That's so it was four, it was four years from our first date we married the four years and a day after our first date and so really That's know that story. god can be in control of everything yeah. even your emotions and it was yeah. just really incredible and we have had we've been married 27 and a half years and I will say it has been an amazing journey, a smooth ride. We get along fabulously. Mm. We hardly ever fight. You know, everybody has those moments where like, right. oh, really, you want to do that? Or, or yeah. you know, like, I told you, I put that there. What are you doing? Right. Like, why do you always, but har there's just hardly ever a cross word, a cross moment between mm. us. I mean, even if there is, it's kind of like, oh, hey, sorry. Yeah. It's just been such a huge blessing. So That's wonderful. Yeah. I love that. So I'm just thinking back in my teen years when, Maybe it's just the timing. Yeah. <laughs> so every now and then, maybe it is just the timing. It's it just is. not God's timing. It is. Uh, yeah. Trust the Lord. Yes. But maybe it's just not the one. Who knows? God knows. Yeah. And I, I, can I just address that real quick? Yes. There's a lot of Christian women who, like I said, there were five of us, you know, who thought Tony was the one or wanted him to be the one. And, and I was, I don't know what the others, but I was like, oh God, this is so weird. Yeah. But I will say he was youth pastor like I said and we were in youth ministry and so a lot of the girls wanted to have it happen the same way and I would be like no you don't trust me this right. was not fun yeah and I and uh, there was one girl she was just waiting for God to tell her this is the one and finally her mother said to her you can choose to love him and they've been married for 25 years hmm. and so I think that um, you go with God on the journey and mostly it will be a natural simple God's not going to change all your feelings. Yeah. If you've got a guy you love and he's not responding, don't think God's going to suddenly change his feelings. Right. That's just very unusual. But know that God is in charge and in control. And if he doesn't have yeah. feelings for you, it probably is a good thing. And God might want to move you on to someone else that's really right. suited for you. So even in that, I was like, God, I'll pick the wrong person. Yeah. He won't like me. Or so the guy who likes me, I won't like. So you choose. Yeah. Yeah. So. And he chose well. He chose that's very good. well. Okay. Next question. Um, so when I was, it was very interesting, when I was reading this, um, it was around the anniversary of 9-11. Okay, yeah. And there is a little, it's not the theme of the story or anything, but it is in there a little bit. And so that was very interesting. So here's a quote. Disasters had long-lasting effects, ripples that ran through a person's soul and mind, leaving marks no one could see, fears, worries, a life locked down. So 
not all of us have gone through um, a tragic thing like 9-11, but we all have difficulties that we face. What's a difficulty that you've faced in life, and how did you get through it? And do you have anything that might help somebody else that's in the middle of that situation sure, now sure. that you've already been through? Sure. Probably the most difficult thing for me was when I did graduate from college, and, and I wanted to travel. I wanted to do. All, I wanted to be in the corporate world. I did want to really have a career. It's the '80s, and that's what you did. You know, mm -hmm. we were yuppies. And I, not long after I got my job, I, I was prescribed uh, some medication, and it really mucked with me. It mucked with mm -hmm. my hormones. And I experienced anxiety, like, for wow. the, and I had never had that before, and I didn't know what to do with it, but it absolutely drove me to my knees. It absolutely wow. drove me into the words. And I figured that once I stopped taking the medication, it, and this is why, well, I'll tell you, it's the birth control pills was prescribed for, you know, other reasons other than what you would think. <laughs> I did, was not in a relationship. I wasn't intending yeah. to need them for that reason, but, um, and it just m messed with me bad, and so, I went off of them and thought, okay, I'll settle out. But that fear was already logged in mm. my brain because, you know, I really wasn't as strong in the Lord as I could have and should have been. And so I had to get on an airplane. Now, I'm traveling, you guys. I travel 70% of the time. Yeah. I went on long trips. I went on a 15-hour flight from L.A. to Sydney. And the moment they would close that door, I would be like, oh, that claustrophobic, locked-in mm. feeling. And I can't get off. Right. And so I had to deal with that. And here, I wanted this, and now that I have it. Did you ever throw up or faint or anything like that? No, I never had a okay. panic attack. I just had strong waves of anxiety. Okay. And then I would just go, oh, no, the peace of Jesus. And it got me quoting the word, memorizing mm. the word, standing on the word, leaning into the word. Even though it was a physical manifestation, I believe in part it was physical, emotional, and probably spiritual. Yeah. You know, the enemy takes advantage of us when we're weak. Mm -hmm. And so I learn to stand on the word I learn to know his word and so no matter what your situation God's word works and one thing that drove me crazy when I was in the midst of this and I was learning and growing and maturing I would hear on major radio Christian radio and they would have major Christian celebrities or speakers or people that we we're supposed to look up to and admire and they would say well sometimes God's word and prayer just don't work and mm. I flat refuse to believe that yeah. because if they don't work my wisdom works right. man's wisdom works right our wisdom no maybe things, you don't get what you ask for in prayer but that doesn't right. mean god didn't hear it and take it into account right or maybe it's that god says we're double-minded let him not expect to receive from the lord not because right. the lord doesn't give it's because you are double-minded you're choosing god and then you're choosing the world and then you're choosing right. god and then you're choosing the world right and so you've got a foot in both camps yeah choose the word choose god right. and i have been in that situation where i just felt like total crap and uh, I would just go, okay, your word says, I do not have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. The peace of Jesus guards my heart and mind in Christ. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would just have those, be anxious for nothing. Right. You know, uh, perfect love drives out all fear, and so yeah. you have to pursue those things. And so that would be my advice to anybody, even if it's an emotional thing, even if your doctor says, well, we think it's that, look, I had it, I knew it was hormones. Mm -hmm. And it, ha it happened again to me when I went through menopause, like a freight train. I don't even, that's a whole other story. We could podcast just that. <laughs> I wrote about it on my blog. You can check it out. Uh, crazy, you're not crazy or super menopausal. Go check it out. Okay. But um, I, I did the same thing on my knees, on my knees, praising God. And what was cool, I still had to walk through it. And the Lord said, Rachel, you just have to walk through this. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And my doctor said, just walk through this. But there were moments where I would wake up and I would have this heavenly peace mm. so I knew it was with me a moment where I used to tremble I used to just come on me all of a sudden I would just tremble and I remember one time the Lord was just like vump and it stopped and I and I was at a, an event and I needed to sleep boom I slept all week you know it just I was able to encounter God because I yeah. walked through it and I didn't mask it with other things right so well that is some wisdom right there there you go <laughs> the That's long good. answer okay well, um, I think we have time for just one more question, then we'll do a really quick just for okay. fun Okay, yeah, thing. we'll do a quick fun. Um, and then if you don't have it, well, I'll just ask you. And, yeah. Um, so something I liked, and it kind of goes along with you what you just said. You guys have to see this. She hand writes it. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> uh, since I'm using my phone to do the videos, I don't I, have I know, right. Around. I love this. Um, so the quote was, do not let your mistakes, which you've paid for dearly, 
define you. Let them refine you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about a mistake that you made that you learned from and it refined you? Oh, gosh. I know that there are plenty of them. <laughs> Okay, yeah, here's one. This is a good one. So um, we were had multi-church youth ministry going, and uh, there was one couple that we were really good friends with. They're about ten years younger than us, uh, but he was he was this, uh, the husband was is a great guy, but he would do things that I would just like latch onto and tease him about or you know, make fun of him. And it, you know, we always had this kind of joking thing going on with all of us. You know, we're all in our 20s and 30s. Well, one night, and we had vacation with this family a couple of times. And so uh, we we're a bunch of us were out after an event. We're all sitting at a restaurant. And he says to me, so, hey, Rach, you know, how long do we want to be on vacation? And I said, well, it depends how long it takes for you to get on my nerves. And we were all like, oh, <laughs> well, that night I woke up and I was, I was trembling. And I was like, oh, is this like, am I, is this fear coming on me or something? It was anxiety, what's happening? And the more I kind of like did my usual pray mm -hmm. and get in the word, like what's, what's going, going on? on here? And you guys know, if it happens in the middle of the night, it's pr usually probably something from the dark side. But in this case, it was God waking me up. Okay. And so, I, so my husband wakes up and he goes, what's going on? And I told him. And so we start praying. And the more we pray, the worse it got. Mm. And I'm starting to think, I'm going to go to the hospital. And my husband goes, you know, I think it's what you said to Lance. Hmm. And I was like, oh, I was kidding. So I began to repent, and it just went. Wow. And the Lord said to me, Rachel, I want to use you to build people up. Hmm. So you cannot tear them down. Wow. And it wasn't that the Lord doesn't like joking. Right. It was that my words were sharp and weighty, and they were wounding a man who was kind and loving and sincere. Yeah. And I was not being sensitive to that. Now, other yeah. times we've joked and laughed and since then. Right. And I've actually had that said to me. I remember with one of our youth kids one time, I'd seen him and I was like, oh, I hadn't seen him in so long. I was so happy to see him. We were at a wedding. And I forget what he said to me, but it was it was piercing. Yeah. And I, he was kind of like being flippant and jokey, but it was right. piercing to me. Yeah. And some of us have weight on our words. Right more than we realize mm -hmm. uh, and I and I from that moment I have always strived to be careful with my words because I do like to exhort people prophetically or from the Lord mm -hmm. and the Lord's the Lord wasn't like well you don't get to check you out can't be both right you don't get to check out here and your words don't matter right. and then check in here yeah uh, they always count yeah so uh, I have always strived to be really careful with my words and mm. and oftentimes even I'll say something and I'll go you know what I'm sorry that was, I, I shouldn't have said that was wrong. I just try to be very repentant yeah. on the spot, you know? Yeah. So, so, you don't, yeah. so you don't have to be woken up later. Yeah. <laughs> Let's or, just take care of it now. Or, you know, so that. I don't have to make, so like I actually called people the next day and apologized. I called him, I called the people at the table and said the Lord just really repented me I'm sure me that was this. a very healing moment just yeah. for all of you. you yeah, know? yeah. Well, everybody else was like, oh, it was nothing. Yeah. But for him, it meant something. Yeah. And for me, it was something. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, just for fun, we're going to try to go through We'll go quick. through these fast because I'm um, Favorite movie or TV show? Oh, uh, favorite movie, Remember the Titans. Okay. And Once Upon yes. a Prince. Yes. 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 Um, okay. Place you've never been to but would love to go? Scotland or Ireland. Okay. Ireland. All right. Um, okay. I don't know if this will be long or not, but I have to ask. Yeah. And you don't have to answer, but an embarrassing moment. Oh, an embarrassing moment. This is awesome. All right. When I traveled for my job, okay. they sent me to Spain. I go to Spain. And uh, I trained uh, people how to work computers, and these were all proprietary, we didn't have PCs, um, how to train newspaper, uh, work at newspapers. So they were newspaper computer systems. So they were the pagination system or the display ad system and how you build the paper and build the ads. So I'm over in Spain, I'm training, and I, um, it's old newspaper, kind of like in the, in the plant area where the press, the press was. And so you had to walk like a catwalk to go to the bathroom. Okay. So. What do you mean a catwalk? So like on a thing, like you could yeah, fall you off had of it? to yeah. Well, there was rails, okay, but it was high above the press, okay, and it was just metal, so like okay. you could look down like so a down grate, below. Okay. yeah, right. And I was probably thirty feet up or okay. whatever. Anyway, and that's where the bathroom was, and it was like a guy's bathroom. It was all industrial or whatever. 
So um, we take a break, and I have an interpreter, and I'm teaching all men. This is the largely men in this. You have an this, interpreter. In, yeah, and I have an interpreter. Because you're in another country. Because oh, by the way, I'm in Spain. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. in Madrid. I'm in Madrid, so they send me over to Madrid, and I go to the bathroom, and um, you know I don't trust the bathroom, so I lay down paper towel all over the toilet, do my business, go back to my class, and I'm like, okay, let you know, entonces, let's get going. So my Spanish gets better when I'm in Spanish-speaking countries. <laughs> and my interpreter walks up behind me and he goes, Rachel, what's this? And he pulls a paper towel out of the back oh, of my no. pants. <laughs> All the paper towel that I put on the toilet oh. to go to the bathroom yes. got stuck in the back of my pants. Nice, I don't know how nice that happened. Tail. I had this little puff. And, and you had walked across the catwalk. Cat uh, yes, like that. Uh, but there was nobody there to see me, but they were going to see me. So I was so cool. I go, oh, and I just, still talking and teaching, I backed up to this big industrial trash can and I pulled them all out and I just kept going. You pulled them all out? I pulled there was them more out. than one? Yeah, there was, was like, like a, three or four. Oh yeah. my gosh. And they hilarious. were the little hand ones that, you know, <laughs> you do your hands with. But it was, it could have been worse. Yeah. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. You could have yeah. turned around and had to ride on a board or something. Yeah, I'm sure there's, I have other more, oh, this is a good one. Okay. But this is funny. And I'll tell it quick. Okay. So there's a song, Indescribable. And so I'm, I'm leading the song, Indescribable, Uncontainable. Well, there's a song that you, um, Heavenly Storehouses Laden with Snow. Yes. So I'm singing the song, and we have on our little headsets and stuff, where I might have been on the, on the wedge on the floor, but I hear this kind of <sighs> hesitation. And so I don't know why, but I sing, loudly in the microphone heavenly whorehouses oh. laden with snow oh my god it comes out of my mouth oh my and goodness. i know oh. do not open my eyes and i know my guitar player if because we would do things like the quirky things would happen and yeah. then you had that look with your guitar right, player or someone laugh. else in the band or my husband's always on the front row i would look at him and he'd always make a face and then you kind of had that moment <coughs> i was like if you open your eyes, yes. you will fall apart. Ah. So I just kept singing, and I was about halfway through the chorus, and I finally like cracked a smile. So later the breakdown was the guitar player immediately whipped around. So if I had looked at him yeah. and seen his back, I would have right. lost it. And Tony's in the front row going, ah. like this. <laughs> the hilarious. weird thing is... So nobody said anything else? Nobody half else? Half the people heard it. Okay. The other half didn't hear it, and some, well, there was like a third. A third heard it, a third didn't hear it, and a third said, did she say what I think she said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not sing that song for like five years. So. Well, that, that is hilarious. That is that, hilarious. That may get the prize. Uh, that, yeah. The most embarrassing. That was really funny. That was one. We still like to joke about that. Well, if you enjoyed the show, please consider uh, hitting that thumbs up to let us know. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely do so. Um, and if you want to enter the uh, giveaway, just check the show notes. It'll be on there. Um, and again, you can choose this one if you win or any of the books that we talked about today. And Rachel, thank you so much. Thank for you, doing Jenny. This with You're me. awesome. Thank you for oh, having thank me. Thank you. You were yep. awesome. Ah! And until next time, happy reading. Bye. Bye, y'all.